imagine your vertebrae. If you can imagine your um your vertebrae, right? This represents your vertebrae. So then we have you know seven cervical. We have a uh, twelve thoracic. And we have um, five lumbar, right? So whenever you have an injury, you guys understand that when you have an injury to the back, wherever the injury is located, let's say it's right here, then you'll have a deficit or a lack of sensation or a lack of movement from that point of the injury and below, right? So can we feel anything below the level of the injury when we have a full disconnection of the spinal cord? No. You can't, right? So there's a condition known as autonomic dysreflexion. And autonomic dysreflexion with the word autonomic, it's, uh, it's carried out by the autonomic nervous system. And it usually happens in theory, what it says is if you have an injury to your thoracic vertebrae at T6 or above, what that means is any injury that you have at T6 or T5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or any of the cervical vertebrae, so any, at any point when you have an injury at T6 or above, you're at risk for developing this condition. This condition develops when the patient is on their bottom and they're not moving too much and the peripheral nerves are sending the signal that, hey, there's an uncomfortable feeling, right? Or let's say your bladder is distended or you are impacted because you're constipated or because your shoes are too tight or you're wearing a little Wayne's pants, you know what I mean? Anything that's stimulating the below the level of the injury, it's sending signals to the CNS. The problem is that this connection does not allow the sensation to register in the brain. So you don't do anything about it. You can't move, right? So at that point, your autonomic nervous system begins to do something really weird. That's why it's this abnormal reflex. And it, that, what it does is it, it vasoconstricts below the level of the injury. So let's say it's at T6. So all the blood vessels below T6, they vasoconstrict. And they essentially shunt all the blood to the top, so the patient's face becomes really red because then you have vasodilation above the level of the injury. So this is an important idea that you guys have to understand, that when you have this issue where your body is being stimulated and you can't do anything about it because you can't feel it, well, your blood vessels constrict below the level of the, level of the injury and they vasodilate above the level of the injury. And this causes extremely malignant hypertension, where your systolic blood pressure can be recorded as being um, above 300. Can you guys see the problem there? So this happens really fast. So you guys have to know when it's developing. You have to be able to identify elements in the, in the patient's situation that may contribute to this condition. Like if the patient's not being repositioned frequently, they may develop this. If the patient's impacted, they may develop this. If their bladder's distended, if their shoes are too tight, if their belt is too tight, if their socks are too tight, if their pants are too tight. You guys know where I'm going with this, right? Any type of excessive stimulation is gonna potentiate this abnormal reflex. So we have to reposition, give cathartics to help the patient defecate, uh, do a, a Foley catheter if, if need to be. You always start with the least invasive interventions, but you know the concept's still the same. So you wanna alleviate or eliminate any of those potential causing factors. You guys have to know what those causing factors are. But the concept is anything that overstimulates the level of the injury, below the level of the injury. Does that make sense, guys? The patient will start developing goosebumps, They'll, their face will become flushed, and they'll have a headache. And so what we have to do is we have to sit the patient in a high Fowler's position. Okay, we have to set them up as high as possible to prevent um, any of the pressure building up in the brain. You know, if you put the head down, the pressure increases in the head, right? So you wanna keep their head as high as possible. You will have to sit them up really high. And generally speaking, what we do is we give medications that uh, alleviate the blood pressure instantaneously. So we're not talking about beta blockers. We're not talking about calcium channel blockers or, or ACE inhibitors. We're talking about powerful ones like hydralazine. Okay. And hydralazine is a central acting vasodilator. That one tells your brain to tell your vessels to open up. It doesn't block anything. It just says open up. And that's what we usually give. So keep in mind uh, the, the numerical value of where this injury is at. Anything above T6 and T6 going up goes T6, T5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then the cervical vertebrae. Any injury above that, this can happen.
keep in mind that the deficit, the lack of sensation will be below that level of the injury. Does that make sense to you? Any questions on that one?